Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. The United States has established a temporary ice camp on an ice sheet, or flow, in the Arctic. Named after the first U.S. submarine to transit the Northwest Passage in 1960, Camp Sea Dragon includes a command center for submarine operations and under ice exercises, a shelter, and housing for almost 45 personnel. The Camp Sea Dragon is critical for conducting ice ex, which is short for ice exercise. It's a five-week exercise conducted every two years by the U.S. Navy. ISEX is basically a testing ground for submarine capabilities in extremely challenging environments. This exercise pushes the limits of submarine technology and the skills of the crew preparing them for potential real-world scenarios. The Arctic regions provide a perfect operating environment for submarines because of the thick ice, making it nearly impossible for the enemy to locate or track them. However, this also makes it extremely difficult for submarines to communicate above the surface. Therefore, the submarines must break through the ice sheet in such a situation. Before conducting such a heroic act with millions of dollars worth of submarines, field agents are sent out onto the vast ice field to prepare the terrain. Initially, they mark the exact spot where the submarine will surface. Once the thin ice is discovered, core drills are used to drill a hole. Later, they insert an acoustic beacon to track the submarine and possibly confirm that the ice is indeed thin enough for the submarine to surface. At the start of the exercise, the submarine dives into the water. You see, a submarine can float because the weight of the water it displaces is equal to its own weight. The displaced water creates an upward force called the buoyant force, which acts opposite gravity. Unlike a ship, a submarine can control its buoyancy. It's equipped with air-filled ballast tanks to keep the submarine on the surface. At this specific moment, the submarine's overall density is less than that of the surrounding water. As the submarine dives, the ballast tanks are flooded with water and the air is vented out until the submarine's overall density is greater than that of the surrounding water, and it begins to sink. The submarine is also equipped with movable sets of short wings, called hydroplanes on the stern, that assist in controlling the angle of the dive.
The hydroplanes are angled so that water moves over the stern, which forces the stern upwards and ultimately the submarine is angled downward. For the submarine to resurface while breaking the ice, the ballast tanks are refilled with compressed air, and the water is forced out of the submarine until its overall density is less than that of the surrounding water. From cruise and ballistic missile submarines to nuclear-powered ones, these humongous vessels resurface on ice using sonar and visual observation to locate the thin portion of the ice above. The crew inside the submarine visualized the entire process on the displays. The U.S. military transports cargo on an airplane that lands on a purpose-built runway. Once landed, the cargo is unloaded and transported towards the camps. Almost every traditional vehicle is impractical in the Arctic region due to snow and ice. Therefore, the U.S. Army uses snowmobiles for cargo transportation. The Arctic Submarine Laboratory heads the ice axe from a temporary encampment built on an ice floe. In addition to enabling submarine operations in the Arctic, ice axe contributes to significant scientific research. The operating depth of the submarines allows them to collect ice from areas that are nearly impossible to reach. The data collected from submarines shows that the ice in the Arctic region is thinning faster than it used to be. The ice camp provides a place for multiple agencies to collaborate and hone their skills in ice diving. For instance, in ICEX 2016, the U.S. Navy and Coast Guard divers entered the near freezing water from cut holes in the thick ice to perform diving activities. These activities are also conducted for scientific research and to train military divers in waters with extreme temperatures. In real-life scenarios, diving doesn't always go as planned. Many factors under that thick layer of ice could require the divers to be rescued by soldiers outside. The U.S. military trains its soldiers to acquire the extraordinary skills required for safely rescuing and recovering divers from under the ice in the frigid conditions of an Arctic environment. For such an exercise, the soldiers take rafts and other equipment to the training zone. The divers, acting as victims, make their way toward the open water. crew uses an ice axe to create an anchor for additional safety during the exercise. If the hole above the ice is small, one of the rescue technicians jumps in to rescue the diver, whereas the others pull them both out of the water using a rope.
I got dressed up in this ginormous suit that kept me very warm. I walked out to the hole <laughs> in the ice and I dipped myself willingly in this freezing water and got rescued. However, the crew uses an inflatable raft to rescue the victim if it's open water. Once out of the water, the victim is moved towards the ambulance and put into hot blankets. The Arctic region is already too scary. On top of that, if one or more soldiers forget their way back to camp, it gets tough to rescue them quickly in freezing environments. For this reason, the U.S. military used C-17 planes to airdrop the Arctic sustainment package after locating the lost soldier. It's an airdroppable package that can provide shelter, transportation, fuel, and food for at least 28 soldiers for up to six days in extreme Arctic conditions. The C-17 has an 88-foot long and 18-foot wide cargo compartment that swiftly opens up and releases a small parachute, followed by an Arctic sustainment package that drops onto the ground. During the ice 2016, the U.S. military used a C-17 aircraft to airdrop supplies to Ice Camp Sargo, located on an ice floe in the Arctic Ocean. Additionally, they deployed multiple paratroopers, who are trained for missions in sub-zero temperatures and dive with almost 100 pounds of equipment. After landing across the drop zone, the paratroopers assembled their tactical equipment and recovered their parachutes before moving to the base. Another thing the U.S. military requires in the Arctic region is a means of cargo transportation. Small unit support vehicles are airdropped from the plane in order to transport supplies on the ground. SUSVs can be of any type. For instance, Bonvanyan, the track articulated transport vehicle of the Swedish Army, is one of the most highly recognized SUSVs in the world. Almost 37 cold weather nations like Canada, Norway, and the UK used Bonwagen to carry troops and equipment for Arctic missions. The overall design includes a forward and a rear compartment connected by a flexible center section. It can carry up to 17 people, six in the front and 11 in the rear compartment. Bonvanyan can travel over soft terrains like snow while carrying tons of cargo. The total load capacity of the two compartments is 2,250 kilograms. However, the vehicle can additionally tow a trailer of up to 2,500 kilograms. The U.S. military's logistical and rescue exercises in the Arctic regions are essential for maintaining operational readiness and resilience in extreme environments.
This will provide strategic advantages during real-world warlike scenarios in the harshest conditions on Earth. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.